Eagles and Washington renew their rivalry under the bright lights of Monday Night Football with much more than bragging rights on the line. Good evening, Eagles fans, and welcome to the kickoff show presented by Exalta. I'm Chris McPherson, joined alongside Fran Duffy. Finally, the long wait for Monday Night Football. It's almost over. Almost. Well, over the next half hour, we'll provide pl plenty of live action from the link. Eagles insider Dave Spadaro and Amy Campbell will break down the key storylines. Merrill and Mike will give us the players to watch, and we go one-on-one -on -one with all pro tackle Lane Johnson. But first things first, Fran, we got to get to the most important item on the agenda tonight, and that this is a must-win game for the Eagles. Yeah, Chris, I think if you were to paint a couple pictures for how the Eagles can make the postseason, I think really it starts with winning out in the division. You've got to win these next three games against the Washington Redskins, the Dallas Cowboys the next two weeks, and then Washington again in Week 17. That three-game stretch starts tonight. They have got to beat the Washington Redskins tonight. That's the easiest way to get into the playoffs. All right, let's send it over to the link for the pregame warm-ups. And great news from a running back standpoint, you have Darren Sproles set to make his first appearance since the season opener against Atlanta for a team starving for some a, a, an adrenaline boost, whether it's on offense or special teams, it's great to get number 43 back in the lineup. Absolutely. I think when you have Darren Sproles, you've got the ability to impact the game in a lot of different ways on offense and special teams. Hope to see him here in the screen game here tonight. We saw Dallas Goddard and Corey Clement impact the game in the screen game a week ago. Hope to get Darren Sproles involved here with that aspect of the game here on Monday night. Also good news, Josh Adams, number 33, coming off his 84-yard performance last week against the Giants, is active. I freaked out, like I'm sure most <laughs> Eagles fans did, when he was listed as questionable on Saturday with a hip injury. We don't know when it took place, but nonetheless, great to have him back to provide some consistency for the rushing attack. Yeah, Mike Garofalo from NFL Network reported earlier that after his pregame workout, he went over and was giving fist bumps uh, to Doug Peterson and Howie Roseman and Joe Douglas. So they had a pretty good idea that he would be active here tonight. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Eagles offense. Quarterback Carson Wentz had some unbelievable plays last season against Washington. Things that you just can't coach. You think about him escaping the sack and getting that huge scramble, as well as that touchdown throw to Corey Clement. Now, last week, he led the fourth quarter comeback in the win over the Giants, bouncing back from his worst performance of his career against New Orleans. In the last in six of the last seven games, Fran, he has a quarterback rating of 100 or better. I think really the big thing that you want to see here from Carson tonight, Chris, obviously he's not going to replicate the, the magic act that he pulled last year, but he does need to avoid pressure because watching these games last season and even in his rookie year of 2016, the Washington Redskins have found ways to get to Carson Wentz, attack the Eagles' protections, get free runners at the quarterback. He has got to be able to make that first man miss, avoid pressure. You want to see him be decisive and accurate with the football here tonight, especially when he's got that free runner in his face. All right, talk about the Washington offense for a moment here. Look, that team started 6-3 and three on the year. Then lost quarterback Alex Smith to a gruesome season-ending leg injury. Colt McCoy comes in. He's the starter tonight. He threw three interceptions on Thanksgiving night against the Cowboys. What have you seen from the veteran backup? Well, number one, he's going to make some plays with his feet outside of the pocket. So that means that he'll be a threat to both run and throw when he avoids pressure moving to his right or left. So that's the number one thing to look for. Number two is he's going to push the ball down the field. He is more aggressive than Alex Smith, but that can be a little bit of a two-sided coin there for that offense. And that, yeah, when you take some risks, there's going to be some reward. But on on the opposite side of that, he'll also throw you some interceptions. He did so in his first outing against uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And over the course of his career, he is one of the biggest uh, interception to completion quarterbacks in the NFL. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups as Jordan Matthews getting pumped there for tonight's showdown. Great news speaking of McCoy and his tendency to throw picks. Hey, look at the cornerback position here. Sidney Jones and Rasul Douglas back. But one thing to note here looking at this Eagles defense is the fact that Washington still has Adrian Pearson in the backfield, comeback player of the year candidate. Not as fast as he once was, but still very difficult to stop. Yeah, you need that guy number 93 to have an impact here on this game. Adrian Peterson is still a very competitive runner, a very violent runner. He's been bothered a little bit by a shoulder injury. I would expect that they try to get some more out of Chris Thompson, who is active here tonight for the Washington Redskins, a renowned Eagles killer over the course of his career. Looking at the Eagles defensive line, they must win up front because Washington has dealt with some severe injuries to the offensive line throughout the year. Yeah, I think when you look at those two injuries inside a guard, Brandon Scherf and Sean Laval out, you insert a couple of guys, Jonathan Cooper and Tony Bergstrom. They haven't changed the way that they play, but certainly a drop-off inside for that offense. 
Okay, so what you're going to see tonight, looking at the players' cleats, it's the My Cause, My Cleats initiative. So, you know, the causes that players are championing, they're near and dear to them. You're going to see it reflected throughout the field tonight, as well as with the entire Eagles organization. You see the Eagles Autism Challenge pin here. All the coaches and front office staff, they have sneakers or cleats dedicated to the cause of turning autism awareness into action. So we're going to send it back over to the link as Eagles insider Dave Spadaro and Amy Campbell are standing by to give us the storylines to watch as well as some bold predictions. Thanks so much, Chris. The obvious storyline is that it's a must-win game, but we're going to dig yes. a little deeper on this Monday night. Amy, your storyline. Every week is a must-win game for the Eagles from here on out, and it has been the case for a while. I'm looking at the trenches in this one, specifically the Eagles' defensive line against the Washington offensive line that is missing a few starters. They're very banged up, and, you know, a lot of their offense runs through Adrian Peterson, the run game. So the Eagles' defensive line that used to be one of the best run defenses statistically in all of the NFL, can they get back to that, stopping the run, getting to the quarterback? I think they win the battle in the trenches here against Washington. I guess we're not being very original, but we are being very strategic here because my storyline is the Eagles offensive line. It's the other side. Against the other side, yes. against one of the best front sevens in the National Football League. A lot of power and speed up front. Ryan Kerrigan off the edge has given the Eagles fits over the years. Ten and a half sacks in 14 career games. Jonathan Allen, a first round pick. Deron Payne, a first round pick. The Eagles front has a very tough assignment. Now, we're also going to give you our bold prediction, which kind of plays off the storyline. Well, yeah, and, and mine specifically, specifically plays off of yours. I'm thinking we're going to see the Eagles' offense explode, but it's going to be in the passing game. You mentioned that French 7 for Washington is going to be a tough test for them. The Washington defense is one of the worst in the NFL at allowing the big play. And so I think we see the Eagles' offense explode over the top, and they're going to win by two touchdowns tonight. All right, well, that's interesting. We'll make the segue to first quarter scoring. The Eagles have not had enough of it this year. Nine times they've been shut out in the first quarter of games in 11 weeks. So I'm going to go with this. The Eagles score 14 points in the first quarter Ooh. and get this crowd on a Monday night really into it Monday in night South football. Philadelphia. It's a must-win moment for the Eagles who have a chance to get back into this playoff picture, not only in the NFC East, but in the wild card yeah. in the NFC. Chris, back to you. Thank you, Dave. And Amy figures that he will steal my bold prediction from last week and it'll most likely come true. <laughs> now, as we show you the bold prediction standings, I don't care about the fact that Fran and I have a combined one win on the season. We're going to continue to be bold, otherwise you're just going to go home. Who cares? Fran, what do you got for us this evening? Look, I know that Josh Adams had that big game last week against the New York Giants. I know Darren Sproles is coming back this week. But my bold prediction here for this game is that we're going to see Corey Clement have more all-purpose yards on offense, more uh, rushing and receiving yardage than the Redskins running back Adrian Peterson here tonight. I think when you take Corey Clement, let's get him going on the ground and through the air. I like him having more offensive yards than the future Hall of Famer. I love it. I love it. I love it. You were so close last week. Every week, Every seems week. so close. I, I mean, that means that Adrian Peterson is going to have one more yard <laughs> than, than Corey Clement. We know that's what's going to go. Yes. One or the other. So, for my bowl prediction, I'm going to go to the defensive side of the football. And Fletcher Cox, okay, led the way for the defensive line last week, was praised by defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz. Not only does he have another dominant outing, he is going to get in the end zone for the Eagles. Can you believe that neither the Eagles' defense nor the special teams has provided points in terms of a touchdown this season. That changes tonight. My bold prediction is Fletcher Cox provides six for the Eagles to help in the cause against Washington. So those are our bold predictions. It's time to send it over back to the link in the Sports Radio 94 WIP booth where the Hall of Fame duo of Mel Reese and Mike Quick are standing by to give us the players to watch. Chris, I cannot believe this is December 3rd. It is an absolutely perfect night. Not much wind, mild temperatures here at the link, but there's nothing mild about this game, Mike Quick. This is a big one for both teams. And my guy to watch tonight, Merrill, is going to be number 13, Nelson Aguilar. Lots of attention being paid to Zach Ertz, that main target for Carson Wentz. I think the diversion tonight will be getting the ball to number 13, Nelson Aguilar. I think that makes a lot of sense. My guy is on defense, and that is Nigel Bradham, because the guy to watch for the Redskins is number 26, Adrian Peterson, and if Adrian Peterson runs wild, the Eagles are in deep trouble. It's Nigel Bradham casting all on his hand, entrusted with stopping Adrian Peterson. Chris, back to you. 
Thank you so much as always, Merrill and Mike. Now, Aguilar told me he has a special touchdown celebration planned if he gets in the end zone tonight. has to do with the whole My Cause, My Cleats initiative. Love it. Let's see if he actually remembers it. That's Let's always see. the yes. key. So ESPN has a telecast tonight, and Jason Wynn, who's in the broadcast booth for them now, was here at the Novacare Complex on Sun Saturday, I should say. A very jarring sight considering the former Cowboys great and all. But he was here to do production meetings as well as conduct a one-on-one -on -one interview with tight end Zach Ertz. And there's a lot of mutual admiration between the two, Witten is Ertz's all-time favorite player, and Witten's, or Ertz's, Witten's, as I'm going to get this right here, <laughs> Witten is Ertz's all-time favorite player, and Witten said that he studied Ertz's game in the last stages of his career. Now, Ertz has had some big-time performances in his career against Washington and could be due for another one this evening. Yeah, I think when you look at Zach Ertz, really his production comes down to three phases, C-Mac. And number one is how this offensive coaching staff uses him. They find ways to get him open at all three areas of the field. Number two, you're going to get to Zach Ertz's skill set. He's one of the best route runners at the position in the league. He does a great job of attacking leverage, creating space for himself to work. And I think number three is the fact that he's got such great comfort, uh, comfort with quarterback Carson. Carson Wentz. I think with those two guys, they've got such a great relationship. All three of those factors really lead to being him being so productive this year. Now, speaking of being productive, Ertz can actually set the franchise record for most receptions in a single season. If he gets seven tonight, okay, you look at the list there, Ertz has 84 on the year, year, needs six to tie Brian Westbrook, who had 90 in 2007. Seven will give him the record. Ertz actually has the single game franchise record already with 15, which he set against Washington back in 2014. Now, what's amazing about Ertz's career, Fran, is that it's four straight years now that he has at least 75 catches and 800 yards. So when you look at his game since he was drafted in the second round by the Eagles, where has he evolved the most in his career? I think that area is really as a route runner, and I mentioned that he's probably the best route runner at the position in the NFL at, at, at the tight end spot, and really it comes down to his just awareness in zone coverage, that ability to uncover, find soft spots in zone coverage. He does a great job there. But number two is his ability to attack leverage, understanding how defenders are trying to attack you, how they're trying to cover you, and then use that to your advantage. If they're trying to play you outside in, try and get them turned around so you're able to create that separation. Zach Hurts over the course of his career has just gotten incrementally better at that uh, phase of the game over the course of his career, and that's why he's one of the best there is in the league at that position. Now, Fran, as we bring up the NFC East standings, you mentioned at the top of the show how this is a must-win game. Dallas is getting a lot of hype yeah. for the Thursday night upset against New Orleans, and deservingly so. Maybe a little bit of a choke job from New Orleans, but all right. Yeah, you, know, with you know, give Dallas sure. what okay. you want okay. right there. Okay. For me, the path to the postseason really hasn't changed for the Eagles. They still need to win tonight and then go to Dallas next week to avoid the season sweep. That's what it comes down to. They have to win tonight, and it starts tonight. And then you go to Dallas next week, and you win against the Dallas Cowboys, and then you've got to finish things up in Week 17. If you do those three things, chances are you're going to win the division. Now, you might need a little bit of help here and there. You, you would like to win at least one of those two games against L.A. and Houston, but really it comes down to those three division games. They've got to be able to do that starting there. All right, now if you've watched the show in previous weeks, you know what time it is. We gotta take it over to PhiladelphiaEagles.com or the app. So if you're watching us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, we're gonna give you 90 seconds to get yourself situated. We'll see you after these messages.